the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, President's office says that Sri Lanka's government has proposed to the IMF an income tax relief by adjusting tax slabs as the tax burden has become a key topic. The Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority has invited applications for the National Tourism Awards 2024 to honor exceptional achievements and contributions to the industry. The stock market continues its positive momentum, marking its fourth consecutive day of gains at the end of today's session. And Samsung Electronics' biggest workers' union in South Korea says it would begin a four-day strike from tomorrow to pressure the company over higher wages. From Studio 24, here's Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. A very good evening and thank you for joining us. President Ranil Vikramasinghe's office said that Sri Lanka's government has proposed to the International Monetary Fund an income tax relief by adjusting tax slabs as the tax burden has become a key topic in the presidential election campaign. The presidential election has been scheduled for the 21st of September and President Ranil Vikramasinghe is contesting in a broader independent coalition. Under the economic reforms committed to the IMF, Vikram Singh's administration raised the maximum limit of personal income tax to 36% from 24% while reducing the slabs to 500,000 rupees. The move came after Sri Lanka was hit by an unprecedented economic crisis in 2022. The move raised the government's tax revenue, but millions of states and private sector employees complained over Vikram Singh's government decision on raising the tax rate and reducing the tax slabs. The President's Media Division said in a statement that following the strong performance in tax revenue this year, the government proposes to the IMF an adjustment in personal income tax slabs from 500,000 rupees to 720,000 rupees, aiming to provide relief to the mid level taxpayers affected by recent tax reforms. The Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority has called applications for the National Tourism Awards 2024 to recognize the excellence and outstanding contributions to the industry. The last event was held in 2018 and the annual event has not been held since then owing to the Easter tax in 2019, followed by the COVID-19 pandemic and the economic crisis. The event is held to promote and enhance service standards, encourage best practices and foster a culture of excellence and innovation in the tourism industry. The SLTDA said in a statement that by acknowledging the achievements of individuals and organisations, they aim to inspire others to the sustainable development of tourism in Sri Lanka. It added that awards include a wide range of categories to ensure every facet of tourism industry is recognised. The categories cover accommodation, restaurants, tour operators, airlines, mice tourism, marketing, communications, education and training, events, excellence in services. The applications, which could be obtained via www.tourismawards.lk, will be open from tomorrow and the deadline is the 15th of September. A government statement said that Sri Lanka's cabinet of ministers has approved the leasing of state land within the Colombo port city to build a hospital, school and university. Asiri Port City Hospital Private Limited is expected to invest $100 million. Gateway International University Private Limited is to invest $25 million US dollars in a university and $25 million in a school. Mayo Clinic of the US was expected to tie up with Asiri Hospital's group for the project. The Colombo Port City was reclaimed from the sea by China Hub Engineering Company. The statement said that the marketable government lands within the port city will be leased for the hospital and port. The lease cost was not given. Sri Lanka and Egypt have agreed to strengthen cooperation in diplomatic training, capacity building, research and studies in diplomacy between the two countries. The Memorandum of Understanding will see cooperation between the Pandaranaika International Diplomatic Training Institute and the Institute for Diplomatic Studies of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Egypt. It was signed by Foreign Minister Ali Sabri and Egypt's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Immigration and Expatriates during a Sabri's visit to Egypt. The two ministers also reviewed bilateral relations between Sri Lanka and Egypt. A statement by the Minister of Foreign Affairs said the both sides noted that the potential to expand relations between the two countries by fostering closer links in the fields of trade, investment, tourism, education, culture, archaeology, maritime transport, renewable energy and climate change. The two ministers also discussed regional and global issues and strengthening cooperation in multilateral fora. 
Sub-Related made Minister of Investment and Foreign Trade Hassan Al Khatib and the President of the General Authority of Free Zones and Investment to discuss trade and investment cooperation. The MFA said that sectors of mutual interest, the exchange of trade delegations, and early convening of trade consultations mechanism were discussed. Let's take a short break now. This is the nightly business report. Welcome back to the nightly business report. The stock market seems to be cementing its positivity as it strikes the fourth consecutive day of gains at the end of today's market session. Both the All Share Price Index and the S&P SL20 Index maintains its position in the green territory, resulting in boosted investor confidence. To get the analysis on today's market performance, we now connect with Vinodini Rajapupati from First Capital Holdings. Hi Anuradhi. Today, the Colombo Stock Exchange extended its positive momentum for the fourth consecutive session, signaling growing investor confidence, likely driven by strong corporate earnings. The ASPI closed at 11,414, marking a gain of 66 points from the previous day, with significant contributions from the banking sector. The S&P SL20 index also saw an increase, rising by 34 points to close the day at 3,279. Investor sentiment remained strong, particularly among high net worth individuals, pushing the turnover to a two-week high of 1.4 billion rupees, which is a 65% increase from the monthly average. The capital goods sector led the turnover, contributing 53% followed by the food, beverage and tobacco, and banking sectors which collectively accounted for 26% of the overall turnover. The top gainers for the day were industrial asphalts, NTB non-voting, cargo boat development company, housing development finance corporation, and Ceylon developments. Meanwhile, the top losers for the day were Malwatta Valley Plantations non-voting, Tess Agro voting, Colombo Fort Land and Building, Mahaveli Reach Hotels and Vidyulanka Voting. Thank you. The Central Bank of Sri Lanka hosted its weekly bill auction today. Dealers noted that bond yields rose due to policy uncertainty related to the elections with reduced demands for longer tenors following the Treasury bond auction yesterday. What can we expect today from the bill auction and what impacts would it have on the secondary market? We pose that question to Netmi Fernando who is standing by from First Capital Holdings. Thank you. The secondary market commenced the week with a muted sentiment ahead of the Treasury bond and bill auctions which was scheduled for the week. As the week continued, the market displayed a lacklustre sentiment as selling pressure enticed the market as most of the maturities inclined across the secondary market yield curve, whilst investors took a cautious stance longing for clear market sentiment amidst the political uncertainty in the country. This trend was continued through today's uh, trading session, recording limited activity as the market experienced very thin volumes. Trades were very lean during the day, mostly centered on liquid maturities, 2026, 2027. Uh, 1226 maturity traded at 1055, 1626 traded at 1105, uh, moreover, 1826 traded at 1110 percent, whilst 151227 traded at 1230. 15530 maturity also recorded trades at 13.25. Uh, meanwhile, uh, the central bank held its 130 billion weekly table auction today, where 91 day and 182 day maturities witnessed higher acceptance during the auction, while they were ex while they were accepted at a higher uh, weighted average yield rate of 9.39 percent and 9.68 percent respectively. Notably, the 364-day maturity was accepted lower compared to the previous T-bill auction at a weighted average yield rate of 10.03%.
Gold prices hovered near record highs today, steered by hopes of U.S. interest rate reduction and persistent Middle East tensions while the spotlight shifted to U.S. inflation data. Spot gold was up 0.2% to $2,469.35 per ounce, shy of the record high of $2,483.60 scaled last month. U.S. gold futures steadied at $2,508.40 and if data confirmed the slowdown in U.S. prices, bets of a 50 BP rate cut in September will increase and it is very possible that the price of gold will reach an all-time high. The U.S. Consumer Price Index data is due today and economists expect month-on-month -month inflation to rise 0.2% with the annual core slowing a tick to 3.2%. Oil prices climbed today, buoyed by industry data indicating a larger-than-anticipated drawdown in U.S. stockpiles. Additionally, softer-than-expected inflation data fueled hopes of more aggressive interest rate cuts. Brent crude oil futures for the October delivery rose 0.5% to $81.09 per barrel, while West Texas Intermediate crude futures gained 0.5% to $77.21 per barrel. Sentiments in the oil market remained on edge as traders anticipated heightened geopolitical tensions in the Middle East. Data from the American Petroleum Institute showed that U.S. oil inventories shrank by 5.2 million barrels in the week ending August 10th, significantly more than the expected draw of 2 million barrels. The Sri Lankan rupee has appreciated further against the US dollar today as well in comparison to yesterday, according to the data by the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. Accordingly, the buying rate of the US dollar has reduced from 295 rupees and 8 cents to 294 rupees and 54 cents, while the selling rate has dropped from 304 rupees and 27 cents to 303 rupees and 82 cents. Meanwhile, the rupee saw a mixed sentiment against some other global currencies. And let's check these rates now. short break now the corporate world on the other side this is the nightly business report welcome back to the nightly business report the leading blue chip conglomerate Aitken Spence PLC reported an impressive earnings before interest cost, tax, depreciation and amortization of 4.3 billion rupees for the first quarter of 2024 to 2025, marking a triple digit growth of 111% over that of the first quarter of the previous year. The group achieved a steady profit before tax of 575.8 million rupees in the first quarter of 2024-2025 which was a significant turnaround for the loss recorded in the previous year. The group's tourism sector recorded an EBITDA of 1.7 billion rupees, followed by the group's maritime, freight and logistics sector, which recorded an EBITDA of 1.2 billion rupees. The group's strategic investment sector demonstrated a stable performance during the quarter while the group's services sector was slightly hampered by multiple factors. The Sri Lankan hotel segment and majority of the overseas hotels so an improvement in the occupancy levels which is encouraging. However, the Sri Lankan rupee appreciation during the April 2024 had a subdued impact on the group's destination management segment. The slight dip in freight rates and the impact of the exchange rate affected the performance of the maritime freight and logistics sector. Moreover, during the quarter, under review Heritance Kandalama, the celebrated flagship property of Heritance Hotels and Resorts by Eight Conspence Hotels marked its 30th anniversary in June 2024. Eight Conspence Hotels was recognized in the top five LMD's most awarded Hall of Fame as lead in the hospitality sector. 
The Insurance Association of Sri Lanka has successfully commenced the highly anticipated Sri Lanka International Insurance Summit 2024, which will run until the end of today at the Shangri-La, Colombo. Recognized as one of the most significant events in the insurance sector, this three-day symposium served as a vital connection between Sri Lanka and the global insurance industry. The summit commenced with an inauguration ceremony by the Central Bank Governor Dr. Nandalal Veerasinghe graced the occasion. This opening ceremony set the tone for the event, emphasizing the importance of the insurance sector in the context of Sri Lanka's economic landscape. Following the inauguration, the summit will feature two full days of conferences, attracting both local and international delegates. The event provided a unique platform for these participants to engage in knowledge exchange, networking and collaboration, fostering an environment of mutual growth and understanding. The overarching theme Insurer's role in challenging economic dynamics guided the technical sessions. These sessions featured an engaging lineup of topics that covered a broad spectrum of subjects relevant to the current and future state of the insurance industry. Experts from various fields shared their insights and experiences, providing valuable perspectives on how insurers can navigate the complexities of today's economic environment. <laughs> Jetstar Asia has announced that it will become the only low-cost carrier to fly direct from Singapore to Colombo when the new service takes off on the 21st of November this year. The Singapore low-cost carrier will be operated five return services each week using their fleet of Airbus A320 series, offering more than 90,000 low fares between the two destinations each year. The split schedule offers morning and evening departures from Changi Airport, providing choice for those starting their journey in Singapore and easy connections for those travelling via Singapore on Jetstar Airways, daily service from Melbourne or to up to six weekly flights from Perth. To celebrate the announcement, Jetstar Asia has launched one-way sales fares from Singapore to Colombo from just 149 Singapore dollars, making Sri Lanka more accessible than ever. Apico, being a pioneer of Sri Lanka's mattress industry, hosted an event celebrating outstanding achievements in the polyurethane sector. Held recently at the Colombo Monarch Imperial Hotel, the award ceremony hosted by Apico Mattress recognized the efforts of 150 chosen dealers. The Dealer Awards occupies a special place in the events calendar of Apico's local manufacturing and distribution sector. This edition features over 150 dealers with who have accumulated impressive sales numbers for the company. The gifts and awards categories range from silver to gold and platinum. The prizes offered included sponsored tours and the tour allocated to the silver category was between Malaysia and Bangkok. The gold category tours included Bangkok, Pattaya and Dubai and the platinum category included the Philippines and Vietnam. Also included with the tours are certificates and plaques commemorating the winners' efforts. The event was also accompanied by the release of three new mattresses from Apico. These include the Apico Activa, designed specifically to provide a restful and rejuvenating sleep experience for all the people living an active lifestyle. Released alongside Apico Activa were the Apico Duke and the Apico Green Comfort, each designed with features exclusive to their respective design. <laughs> Sanasa Life Insurance has partnered with Colombo Ray and CareClean Private Limited to bring yet another insurance policy to provide an affordable insurance scheme for the employers of CareClean. With over 36 years in the sanitation and cleaning industry, CareClean is supported by its dedicated workforce of 1,800 employees who undertake demanding labour-intensive work. Given the nature of their work, Employees are exposed to the risk of occupational hazards daily and these workers come from underprivileged backgrounds. As a consequence of their economic situation, they could easily face devastating challenges in the managing unforeseen circumstances such as the breadwinner in the family losing his or her life. It is with this in mind that Sanasa Life Insurance came up with a tailor-made insurance scheme that addresses the risk these workers face. <laughs> Sri Lanka's first multinational textile manufacturer, the TJ Group, proudly hosted its inaugural Sustainability Summit, marking a significant milestone as Sri Lanka's first ever Sustainability Summit in the textile industry yesterday in Colombo. This event highlighted TJ's role as a leader in the industry, not only in financial performance, 
but also in sustainability and environment, social and governance practices. The event was hosted based on the need to expand focus to address both chemical management and the broad aspects of sustainability. This summit marks TJ Group's first step forward in that very direction. The TJ Group has consistently set benchmarks in the local textile fraternity by pioneering sustainability initiatives. Through collaboration with other industry leaders, the TJ Group reinforced its commitment to achieving the sustainability goals outlined in its Abhiwala 2030 roadmap. The event underscored TJ's ongoing efforts to position Sri Lanka as an ethical sourcing hub in the competitive global textile market. The summit covered important topics such as the importance of sustainability in the textile and apparel industry, integrating ESG into the future of sustainable textiles, traceability and transparency in the global textile and apparel industry, and national policies, strategies, plans and actions for the textile sector. Let's take a short commercial break, global update, right after this. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Asian shares rose today after soft U.S. producer prices data stirred hopes that consumer price inflation would be benign, while the Kiwi dollar slumped after its central bank cut rates for the first time since early 2020. Adding to the busy news flow in Asia was an announcement that Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida would step down as ruling party leader in September, ending a three-year term marked by rising prices and marred by political scandals. MSCI's broadest index of Asia-Pacific shares outside Japan climbed 0.4%. Most markets rose, but China was an exception, with both Hong Kong Hang Seng and mainland blue chips down by around 0.5%. U.S. stocks surged to a near two-week high yesterday, with the Dow and the S&P 500 advancing and the Nasdaq also rising. Among the notable movers, Starbucks soared, marking its largest single-day increase ever. U.S. stocks rose to a near two-week high Tuesday after softer producer prices data reinforced bets of an interest rate cut by the Federal Reserve in September. The Dow added 1%. The S&P 500 gained nearly 1.7 percent, and the Nasdaq jumped 2.4 percent. Producer prices climbed less than expected in July, and in the 12 months through July, the PPI increased 2.2 percent, after climbing 2.7 percent in June. Consumer prices come out Wednesday. Traders now see a 55 percent chance of a 50 basis point rate cut by the U.S. Central Bank next month from less than 50% before the report, according to CME's FedWatch tool. The other 45% see a 25 basis point cut. Stocks on the move included Starbucks, which skyrocketed 24.5%, its biggest one-day percentage gain ever, after the coffee chain appointed Chipotle head Brian Nickel as chairman and CEO. Chipotle shares fell 7.5% and JetBlue dropped nearly 5%. It plunged more than 20% Monday, after ratings agencies S&P and Moody's downgraded the airline after it unveiled plans to raise more than $3 billion in debt. Samsung Electronics' biggest workers' union in South Korea said it would begin a four-day strike from tomorrow to pressure the company over higher wages and bonuses after talks with management fell through last month. Samsung Electronics faces another strike this week. The company's biggest workers' union said Tuesday it would begin a four-day strike from Thursday. Yeah! Yeah! It wants to pressure the company over higher wages and bonuses. It comes just weeks after talks with management fell through in July. Vice President of the National Samsung Electronics Union, Lee Hyun Kuk, said the strike is strategically designed to damage the company. He said the union expects the company would not have enough backup office workers to support production lines during the planned strike. Samsung said in a statement it plans to ensure there are no production disruptions. 
It also said it would adhere to no work, no pay principles and continue efforts to resume talks. The union declared an indefinite strike in July. But it asked members to return to work in early August after talks with management fell apart. The tech giant said in late July the strike held that month did not disrupt production. The union has 36,500 members and makes up about 30% of Samsung Electronics' South Korean workforce. And that marks the conclusion of today's nightly business report. We'll see you again tomorrow with the latest happenings across the business world. Until then, I'm Anuradha Vikramasinghe. Thank you for watching. Have a great night.